So Wilna Hervey was an actress in these 1920s comedies that sort of focused on her size, where she starred as the powerful Katrinka. She was six foot three inches tall and 300 pounds, and her co-star was Dan Mason, an older, experienced actor. He sort of mentored Wilna. Nan Mason was the daughter of Dan Mason, and that's how Wilna and Nan met. Wilna had bought this small little shambles of a place which she called her studio. And Nan came to Woodstock and fell in love with Woodstock as, as much as Wilna had originally fallen in love when she came up to study at the Art Students League. From there, they embraced this community of artists in a period of time when Woodstock was particularly vibrant. And it wasn't just you know, a handful of friends that they had that were artists. It was quite a number of people. And they all embraced each other, and they painted each other, and they photographed each other, and they had dinner parties together, and costume parties. And if somebody needed help, they were there to jump in for each other. Chief among the pleasures that Wilna Hervey and Nan Mason embraced was their close relationship with so many prominent people in Woodstock. One of their very close friends was Eugene Spiker, who was foremost American painter in 1936. Also George Bellows. Eugene Spiker in particular supported Wilna in her enamel work. Wilna was very close friends with the film director Frank Capra, and all these people gathered together and enjoyed dinner parties together and costume parties. Ralph Whitehead was searching for this utopian art community, and he discovered Woodstock, established an art colony that was sort of crafts-based, and he called it Birdcliff. And his partner, Hervey White, was a little bit more of a rebel. Eventually decided he was gonna do his own thing and he established what he called the Maverick. Hervey White and the Maverick are known for their really raucous sort of festivals that they had every summer. The following years, it got wilder and wilder. You know, there was more drinking, there was more nudity which alarmed the Woodstock police. They weren't too keen on all this, but it grew and it grew and it grew until there were th literally thousands of people who were coming to this Maverick Festival. Until the town of Woodstock decided it was just a little bit too much over the top. There were too many things that were just a little too out of control, so the Maverick Festivals ended. But at that point, Wilna Hervey and Nan Mason started what they called their full moon party, which was sort of a continuation of this maverick tradition. People came in costume. It was in August under the full moon. And people brought instruments, and there were children, and there was food, and there was partying. And they were very well known for these parties, which you might think of as a model for the Woodstock festivals that followed. Will and Nan influenced each other in whatever each or the other decided to take on, whether it was farming, whether one decided to take up photography, then the other would take up photography. They ended up doing something that was quite unique, and that was their enamel work. And that's sort of their signature artwork. They both did it. Each of their work was very different from the other. Wilna's was sort of whimsical, figurative, Nan's work was oftentimes much more abstract and almost cubist. Nan went on to develop her artistic career and it included lithographs, printmaking, but they had this zest for life that they shared as a couple. And even though in the time period that they were a couple, relationships such as theirs were relatively undefined. They spent almost 60 years together pursuing everything that they could think of to pursue. 
with the most intense gusto that you can imagine. And they did this really up until the very, very ends of their lives.